Hello friends, Namaskar, this is Sanjay. Welcome to part 8 of this video series and today we will be talking about Multidimensional Intelligence by Howard Gardner. This happens to be the 8th topic in the CTET CDP syllabus. In this series, we will cover only those topics which are important from your examination point of view. We will start with uh, a brief overview of who was Howard Gardner. We will look at uh, what is the multiple intelligence theory, what are the different ways of processing information how Gardner's theory was expanded over the past few years. We will look at what are multiple intelligences and the criticisms of the multiple intelligence theory. We will also understand what are these multiple learning styles. And we will end the video with some sample questions from previous question papers. So let's get started. Howard Gardner was an American developmental psychologist. He is best known for his theory of multiple intelligences. He first published this theory in 1983 in his book titled Frames of Mind, The Theory of Multiple Intelligences. Even previously, many psychologists and scientists have defined intelligence as the ability to acquire knowledge, to identify problems and to use that acquired knowledge to solve those problems. Now Gardner expands upon this definition and says that the sol problems that are being solved or the products that are being developed by this person who has acquired the knowledge should be of some consequence in the particular cultural setting or community. That is, these should be contextually connected to the community or the society that he is living in. Which means that these problems should be real problems and not imaginary ones. Let us take a quick look at what is this multiple intelligence theory all about. Gardner says that there are several different types of intelligences. Here, we will talk about eight different types of intelligences that he has proposed. There is bodily kinesthetic intelligence, which is where people have very good control over their own body. These can be athletes or sportsmen. Then there is interpersonal intelligence, wherein people who have this intelligence can form very good relationships with other people. They are able to convince people and this is usually displayed by businessmen and salesmen. Then there is verbal or linguistic intelligence. This is displayed by authors or poets who have very good control over language, they have command over language. Then there is logical and mathematical intelligence. So this is displayed by engineers or good architects or people who are in the scientific field who have to use logical methods or depend on a lot of mathematical process. And then there is naturalistic intelligence. So this is where people are good with plants and animals and the natural world. Then there is intrapersonal intelligence, wherein a person knows his or her own feelings and able to control his or her own emotions. So this is intra, that is inside. So intrapersonal is internal intelligence. Then visual spatial intelligence. So this is displayed by photographers or by architects who are able to see a picture and visualize how it will look like and uh, they can look at a particular space and imagine things and build things in their mind itself. So they are able to visualize a lot of things. So this is visual spatial intelligence. Then there is musical intelligence. So this is displayed by composers or singers. So Gardner says that humans have several different ways of processing information. Now if you connect it to his theory of multiple intelligences, obviously depending on the type of intelligence that a person has, People will have several different ways of processing information because a person who has high degree of musical intelligence will look at things in a different way as compared to a person who is more logical or mathematically intelligent. And Gardner also says that there are a wide range of different abilities operating in the human mind, which is nothing but the different types of intelligences that are operating in a human mind. And these abilities do not necessarily correlate strongly with each other. That is, a person who has a high degree of musical intelligence need not necessarily have bodily kinesthetic intelligence. So, there is no strong correlation between these different types of intelligences. However, they are not completely independent. That is, a person who has good interpersonal skills may also have very good verbal or linguistic intelligence because a person who has a high degree of interpersonal intelligence will have to interact with people for which he or she will need to be good verbally and linguistically. Therefore, some of these intelligences are not completely independent. So, this is what Howard Gardner's theory is all about. When Gardner says that humans have different ways of processing information, this can be seen 
through some simple puzzles as well for example when people look at the same image some people will see two different faces whereas other people looking at the same image will see a glass or a candle holder and people looking at this image will see that there is a duck with its beak on uh, one side whereas people looking at the same image will see a rabbit with its ears on the top and people looking at this image will see a frog the eyes of the frog and the body of the frog whereas other people looking at the same image will see it as the head of a horse so this way the same information can be processed by different people in different ways and that can be because of different types of intelligence that people have let us now look at how gardner's theory has evolved over the past few years so originally in 1983 he proposed seven different types of intelligences and in 1995 he added naturalistic intelligence also into the list and more recently in 2016 he has been uh, talking about the existence of other different types of intelligences such as existential so this is displayed by people who are more connected with uh, spirituality and the concept of god and he also says that uh, just knowing something is not enough to become a good teacher so the ability to teach others requires something called teaching and pedagogical in- intelligence so this is also something that he has proposed so in this way gardner's theory has evolved over the past few years before proceeding let's take a quick look at uh, the eight different types of intelligences that are listed in howard gardner's theory at present linguistic or verbal intelligence is connected with reading writing telling stories and memorizing words so usually displayed by authors and poets musical rhythmic or harmonic intelligence which is connected with singers or composers and this involves the sensitivity to sounds rhythms and tones of music logical or mathematical intelligence it can be displayed by scientists or engineers who deal with logic abstractions reasoning critical thinking visual or spatial intelligence gives people the ability to mentally visualize things or exercise spatial judgment or imagine things bodily kinesthetic is connected with physical activities such as sports dance and wherever you need to use your body to make things and interpersonal is the ability to relate with other people and communicate effectively empathize easily with others intrapersonal is looking inwards and this involves the ability to predict one's own reactions and emotions and control them and exercise self control and finally naturalistic which is the ability to understand the natural world flora and fauna that is animals and plants let us look at uh, some of the reasons why the multiple intelligence theory has been criticized with so many different types of intelligences being in this theory they are all not measurable using a standardized formula or method that is there is no one single formula or method for measuring all these different types of intelligences and some of these such as musical or interpersonal there is a debate going on and on whether they are actually intelligence or they are just talent or skill that can be learned and there is also a lack of empirical evidence for some of these different types of intelligence for example how do you say that somebody has naturalistic intelligence or somebody has good intrapersonal intelligence so this is very subjective because i might interact with a person and say that okay this person has good naturalistic intelligence or intrapersonal intelligence but is there any experimental evidence that is available to prove that no and if there are so many different types then how do you compare a set of learners or a set of children in a classroom how do you measure them against the same skill so this theory does not allow you to do that there is one more interesting observation or theory that is connected with this theory of uh, multiple intelligences that is if there are so many different types of intelligences then there will be different types of activities and tasks connected with each type and there have to be different learning styles that are used to learn these different types of activities for example for any activities that are connected with visual or spatial intelligence then people have to learn by seeing those so here we use visual learning style and for musical or interpersonal intelligence related tasks or activities people have to hear to be able to learn so here auditory learning style is used and for intrapersonal or linguistic intelligence related activities 
people have to read and write a lot to be able to learn things so here we are using a reading or writing learning style and for kinesthetic or naturalistic intelligence related activities then people have to learn by doing so this is kinesthetic learning style so this way because of multiple intelligences there have to be multiple learning styles as well which are used by people in each of these different types of activities gardner initially formulated seven intelligences which among the following is not one of them as we learnt earlier in this video initially in 1983 gardner came up with seven different types of intelligences and later in 1995 he added naturalistic intelligence also into the list therefore if you look at the options naturalistic intelligence is not part of the original seven it was added later in 1995 therefore this is the correct answer which of the following observation supports howard gardner's theory of multiple intelligences if you read through all the statements you'll see that the third statement which says that damage to one part of the brain affects only one particular ability sparing the others this seems to support the theory of multiple intelligences because if there are multiple intelligences and different parts of the brain are responsible for each of these different types then damage to any one part will affect only that type of intelligence and will not affect the others therefore statement 3 seems to support the multiple intelligence theory following are the critical views about the theory of multiple intelligences except that is we have to identify which of the following is not a criticism of the theory of multiple intelligences if you remember what we discussed previously in this video we have seen that this theory of multiple intelligences is not a research based and there is lack of empirical support for some of these different types of intelligence and also if there are different types of intelligences then we have to use different teaching methods and different assessment methods for different students therefore 1 2 and 4 are all criticisms of this theory whereas gifted students usually excel in a single domain this is not something that is been used for criticizing this theory therefore option 3 is the correct answer Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences emphasizes which of the following Now if we are talking about multiple intelligences then the theory is not talking about conditioning skills it is not talking about one general type of intelligence and it is not talking about a common ability that is required in the school this theory is essentially talking about the unique abilities of each individual because if there are different types of intelligences then everybody will have a different capability or a unique ability therefore howard gardner's theory of multiple intelligences emphasizes on the unique abilities of each individual and with that we come to the end of this video if you have any questions or feedback please post them in the comment section below and the rest you know what to do So I will see you soon again in the next video till then take care stay safe